What a great blessing to be with you. I am Pastor John Pinnell of Calvary Chapel of Lake Villa, also one of the voices here on WLGS 101.5 FM. Time for this morning's devotional, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. I titled this devotional, The Third Sign. Here in chapter 5, John documents the third and fourth miracles of Jesus and also reveals a significant turning point in his relationship with the religious rulers of Israel. And it begins right here with this third miracle. We find that in chapter 4, after Jesus had healed the nobleman's son, verse 1 of chapter 5, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. According to the Mosaic law, all Jewish males were to appear before the Lord, your God, in the place where I have chosen, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear empty-handed before the Lord, according to Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. And although John does not name this feast, Jesus was obedient to his Father's command. Well, there was a gate in Jerusalem at the northeast corner called the Sheep Gate where the animals were brought to the temple for sacrifice. This gate is mentioned three times in the book of Nehemiah by name. And in verse 2, we read, There in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Bethesda meaning house of mercy. The Bethesda reservoir, a pool that was there, traditionally had an angelic visitor who from time to time brought healing to the sick. Therefore, laying around the five porches of Bethesda were a great multitude of sick people. John tells us in verse 3, there were blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, there are those in the church today that dismiss these healing But I believe that the great multitude of sick, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, testified that God did miraculous work there from time to time. The significant thing to remember that it was not the water that brought healing, nor the angel, but the person's faith in God, that God is able to heal the sick. In Matthew, uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 10, verse 51, Jesus said to a healed blind man, go your way, your faith has made you well. So the faith that we have, not in the water, not in an angel, but the faith that we have in God, that he's able to heal. So there at Bethesda, a certain man was there who had an infirmity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knowing that it had been in that condition for a long time, he said, verse 6, do you want to be made well? Jesus, knowing this man, he had been sick for a long time. Later on, we'll know that he'll say to this man, go and sin no more. So perhaps even his illness was connected with a past sin that he had committed. But Jesus mercifully called out to him, do you want to be made well? Jesus, knowing Well, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 3 tells us, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down, my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Jesus knows. He knows the condition of our hearts. Yet this man, verse 7, we discover all he could do was offer Jesus excuses. Have you ever been guilty of doing that? He offered Jesus excuses, bemoaning the fact that every time the pool's water stirred, while he was making his way to the water, someone stepped down before him. He said in his excuse, Sir, I have no man. No one to help me is what he was saying. I have no man to help me. And it's a notable thing in John's account that this man did not seek out Jesus, but Jesus sought him out. In verses 8 and 9, we find that the man was immediately healed. And Jesus said to him, 
Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And on that day was the Sabbath. The man took up his bed in obedience to the words of Jesus, even though it was on the Sabbath day and went against the Sabbath day traditions of the Jews. But the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 15, 22, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Well, this man laying by the pool of Bethesda with the healing waters just out of reach, it caused me to think about people who at times sit in our churches, when we can sit in our churches once again. Perhaps they listen to the gospel being proclaimed on TV or on radio or on social media, maybe even reading daily inspirational encouragements yet never having received the salvation that can only come through faith in Jesus Christ. They need a man. We all need a man, and his name is Jesus. And the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all. And Father, I pray that you would help us to realize we need a man. And Lord Jesus, that you are that man, the Savior of the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.